In this video, I want to talk about the new focus update. I normally don't cover the updates, but this made some important improvements that have been requested for a while, and I felt it was worth going over. There are several small changes that won't concern or even be noticed by most, but we do have a few nice quality of life improvements that we have been waiting for. If you want to look at the official release notes, I will leave that link in the description, and you can check those out on the GitHub page. Now let's open up our focus and go into the advanced tab. First major change is the new output format. Before we only had PNG option, but now you can also select JPG or WebP. While we could have a whole other conversation on which one of these to use, if you don't know yourself, then PNG will be fine unless you are really concerned about file sizes as it is a lossless format, meaning there is no compression. JPG and WebP are compressed and will be smaller but lose some detail. And if you are downloading six gig models without concern, then using PNG will be fine. Moving on to the model tab, we will see checkboxes next to the LORs has been added. Now we can easily activate or deactivate a LORA without having to remove it or turn the weight to zero if we wanted to shut it off. A very helpful change when you want to quickly deactivate and then reactivate a LORA without losing your weight settings. This could get tedious when dealing with multiple LORAs when trying to test things out. Now another change here is the ability to have the default max weights or LORAs go beyond positive and negative too. Most of the time you wouldn't want to go beyond these numbers, but there are LORAs created out there that do go higher. A big example is the Detail Tweaker XL. It is designed to go as far as plus or minus three. So up until now, we couldn't utilize it entirely, but we will have to change these settings ourselves manually. In the past, I would change the config text file directly, but I would recommend creating and making changes in presets only now mostly because the config file occasionally gets overwritten, plus it is good to leave the default settings alone. If you don't know about presets, I will add a video in the description showing how to create those. So I have my old and new custom preset here, which is just a copy of the default settings with my changes. You can see some new lines that I have added. For the new min max lower settings, we have these two lines here. Just to make it easier, you can copy these lines from the config modification tutorial text file in your focus folder so you don't have to try to type them out yourself. Once added, you can put whatever numbers you want. I will use four for now, but if I encounter a LoRa that needs to go higher, I can always come back and change this. There is also this additional line here. This allows us to use more LoRas than the standard five. I have yet to use more than five, but you can easily add this line in too and change the number to whatever you like. This line can also be found in the modification text file. Now back in focus, I want to go to the advanced tab and then into debug. Down at the bottom, we will notice three new boxes. Disable intermediate results will make it so. When generating multiple images, you will only see the image currently being generated and will no longer see completed images on the side until the entire process is done. This isn't something useful to me, but I suppose if you would rather see the current generation image in the full window, then this is for you. Then we have disable seed increment. What this does is when generating more than one image, even on a fixed seed, the next image will go up a number in the seed. Otherwise, all the images will be exactly the same. So how can we use this? Well, that is where another new feature comes in, and that is the new support for arrays. How this works is similar to creating mini wildcards inside the text prompt. So let's say we wanted four pictures of a woman with four different color shirts in one prompt. So how would we write that using the new array support? We would type a woman wearing a, then for the colors, we would create two brackets, then write our four different colors like this, then end it with two brackets and then type t-shirt. This can be two colors or as many colors as you want. You just need to enable enough image generations to get all iterations. If you have four colors, we want four images. The other difference between this and wildcards is this will produce results in order of the input. With wildcards, it will choose words in a random order. So doing it this way, you will always get a red, green, blue, black t-shirt in that order with this prompt. This can also be used multiple times in the prompt, such as this prompt. And make sure your image number is high enough for the prompt. This will create 12 unique images. It might be confusing at first how these generate but it will go blonde, man, red, brunette, man, red, then blonde, woman, red, brunette, woman, red, then blonde, man, green, and so on. 
So you can create multiple unique items this way very quickly without having to create a wildcard every time. And this isn't limited to single words either. You can use entire phrases like this. You just need to remember if you have multiple combinations of arrays that you will need to bump up the image number uh, to compensate. If there are 10 possible images, but I leave the image number at two, it will only ever show the first two combinations. Now getting back to the disable seed increment setting. With this enabled, it will allow you to use the new array prompts and create all these images on the same seed which is beneficial when trying to compare the differences without the image changing too much. Now with all of these images on the same seed, we get very similar images with just a shirt change. It's not always this similar, but the idea is you are seeing the same image on the same seed with only the color changed. Without this feature, each of these images are going to be the next seed, and you can see the differences are more pronounced since they are different seeds. This setting really only works with the array prompts right now, as far as I can tell. Even wildcards won't change on the same seed. You will just get the same image over and over, so keep that unchecked otherwise. The last setting is the save metadata to images. This is useful if you have been wanting your images to save the info onto the PNG in order to easily reload the settings you have used from the image. This was a feature not included for a long time as the developer didn't want it included to protect data privacy of others. But since it was such an in-demand feature, it was finally included as an option. What it does is very similar to the history log, but now it just attaches the information directly onto the image itself. So if you have this enabled and create an image, you can now go to your input image menu and you will see another new tab here called metadata. And you can load and or drag and drop an image here. As long as it has metadata enabled, you should see this info. With this, you can apply the metadata and it will load all the settings used to create this image. This is just like using the history log and using the copy to clipboard. Pasting into the text prompt, then hitting load parameters. The metadata does hold more information than the history log. I have noticed if you set custom steps for something like lightning, the history log doesn't load that parameter, but otherwise is pretty similar. So let's go back to our preset documents, and you can see at the very end we have three new lines. This is only if you want to have metadata on by default, same as before. You can copy these lines from the modification text file. Have this set to true, and make sure not to capitalize it. Metadata scheme is just the format which it is saved. Keep it at focus. In the last line, you can add a name if you want to tag your creations, but keep it blank if you are concerned about privacy. You actually can drag in an image created in Automatic 11.11 or Forge to see the metadata here, but it won't be able to be imported. The last thing to mention is for those who have models and LoRa's in multiple places, you can now add all those paths to the config file. To start this, I will add a bracket here then a space, add a parentheses, and paste in the extra location for my models. Add another parentheses, a bracket to close it, and a comma. Also, the backslashes have to be double, so you will have to add those in. And you can leave it like this and it should work, but if you want it to look more organized, you can space some things out. Just hit enter here and tab. Then go over here and hit enter and tab. And then between the last parentheses and bracket, hit enter and tab. It's not necessary, but makes it a bit easier to read. You can do the same for the LoRa's if you have extra in a different location too. Once you save that, you can start or refresh your focus. And in the model tab, the new models from the secondary position will actually start at the bottom of the list in case you can't find them. And I think that wraps this one up, guys. Hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, you know what to do. See you in the next one.